Of course, there's Gavin Lorena and Vicky, and, and they, have also played a huge part of, in Comet's life and in, in your life too. Oh gosh, you know, and that, you know, it's another, it's another group of people that we'd only just known through work. They've, they've become family, um, you know, Gavin and Vicky and the kids, Ashton and Ava, they're like my Joburg family and yeah. it, it's, it's thanks to a horse like this That's and yeah. um, he's, he's created a lot of memories and, and a lot of future memories to come. Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat. And uh, we're at the Cl Sommerfeld Clubhouse as uh, per normal, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest. And we always start with ladies first when we on our uh, we have lady guests. And today we have uh, top Cape Town conditioner Michelle Ricks with us, uh, and sh she's going to uh, be our guest as Tawanda Ricks, the uh, um, recording equipment. Michelle, how are you? Nice to have you with us today and uh, nice to have you in KZN once again. Yeah, oh my goodness, KZN's been good to me and um, you know, what would a, a winter be if you didn't have to make a stop here and, and bring some of our conditioners to, to the warmer climates? Just going to rattle Andrew's cage for a moment because you say you've woken up on the wrong side of the bed and you're extremely grumpier than normal. Yeah, well I've been awake since one o'clock this morning. What happened? I'm not well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't sleep. Okay. Couldn't sleep. Uh, okay. And uh, we also need to rattle to Wanda's cage. We'd like to wish you, where are you? There you are. A very happy birthday. It was your uh, 21st, was it? Um, 31st. 31st. We'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. However, we're most disappointed. We thought there'd be a nice chocolate cake for us. We knew you, had, we, you knew we had a lady guest with us. A nice cake for your birthday. Minus 10 points. Okay. Minus 10 points. But very happy birthday. Okay, so that's out the way. Let's get straight into the action. Uh, before we get into the action, uh, was it true what Paul Lafferty said on air the other day? You're training for the comrades. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. even with that dishing action. Yes, yeah, but you've got to overcome that sort of thing. Okay. You know, it's like you buy a horse with skew legs, you know. They can still win races. Still win races. Okay, that's true, I suppose. No, no perfect race horse. No perfect yeah, race horse. Right, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got two, two new knees. You've got two knees. Right. Yeah, you, you turn out badly, yeah. Anyway, but uh, it's only at the trot. So I suppose if you just do a gentle run, you'll be okay. Let's go and talk uh, proper stuff now with Michelle. The, the first question, like I ask all our guests, how did you hear about racing? I know, and Andrew knows, you come from a, a racing family, but... Tell us more because there are people out there that don't know your story. Yeah, or well, you know, I was, I was born into, into racing. My dad started off as a jockey and, and took his trainer's license out in 1976, quite a while ago. And yeah, just a natural progression. You know, growing up as a kid, being in the yard every day, um, I can't actually think of anything else that I wanted to do other than be a, a horse trainer. So I've most certainly fulfilled my dream of, of wanting to, to be a trainer and it seems to be going good. Your uh, sort of path that you planned, you know, obviously you, you, you in, in your, when you were a child, you were around horses, etc. And your dad was as a jockey and then became a trainer. And then I suppose the first move, is it safe to say the first move was that you and your dad took out the joint trainer license and, and that sort of was the first step to, to get things going? Yeah, you know, I probably, it probably came a bit sooner than, than I expected. My dad had a stroke just over three years ago and that kind of expedited the the movement into us joining forces and you know there's a plan for everyone sure. it came at the right time in my career and I was you know blessed to have a horse like Comet who's who's given me a July winner and a and a Met winner and you know that that's a plan that's laid out for us and I couldn't be more grateful. Talking about Comedy Din, I very very fondly and, and remember you know the race had run and you'd, you'd to have done the presentation you were going to the back of the saddling area I think to check on him and and uh, just I remember you, you were so beautifully dressed and you had your lovely hat on but there were just tears aplenty understandably and you could just feel the vibe off you I mean it was just uh, I mean you must have been on a buzz and on a high for days after that if not weeks it was you know let me tell you there was a lot of pressure going into into that July you know, we came and he, he ran two credible thirds in the Guineas and the Daily News and, and there was a lot of pressure. He was Cape Town's star horse and, you know, I always knew that the big result was July Day. And, yeah, you know, I've heard my dad speak about the July and, and past winners over the decades. 
so for me to have come up here and, and to put his name in, in the history books, it was it was very emotional, and yeah. and I'm I'm glad I did it. Yeah, absolutely. And Shay, I mean, you, you speak about Dad and his stroke, and it was lovely to see him representing you uh, down in the Cape the other day. And his health, is, it's obviously always an issue, but uh, now that he's up on his feet and he, he's obviously able to sort of check the horses and, and still be part of the team. No, that's it. And you know, um, you know, he'll say himself, he's he's living his best life at the moment. Um, those years of hard work, he can you know, take a step back yes, and, yes. And, and enjoy life. He's, he's deserved it and that's what I've, I've come to do. I've make life easier for him, pave a way for myself and glad that we can do it together. So your, your dad was, was sort of part of that whole uh, Cape Cabal with, with uh, uh, Peter Kanema and, and Jeff Woodruff and that's all it. those. Yeah, Some and um, yeah, he's kind of baby killer. Hundred percent. He cemented himself like firmly in, in Cape racing, and you know, rightly, rightly so. He's always had a small yard, and I'm, I'm glad I could come to the party and in increase things that way. And I'm uh, comedy doing. I mean, that must be the best horse ever to cross your path. Oh yes, without a doubt. I mean, he's certainly filled the trophy cabinets for us. But I mean, if you had to look back at my dad's career, he'd. He'd certainly one of his favourites is always a horse war raider that he talks about often. And, you know, we just hope that every decade or so a few more of these can come along. Right. Ashwin Reynolds, we're going to talk about your other owners, but we're talking about Comedy Dinner, we're talking about Ashwin Reynolds. What a wonderful man and, and what a, uh, you know, people talk about the people's horse, but you know, he's, a, he's a, uh, a people's man, you know, he, he's at the races, talks to everybody and he's... He seems shy, but once he opens up and you get to know him, he's just a wonderful, wonderful character, and it couldn't have happened to a better person. You know, Warren, Ashton's an, an incredible human being, and we always call him our lucky charm, and it's simply because he shares so much of his life and shares so much of his passion of racing with everybody. He wants everyone to enjoy racing, and, you know, luck finds him. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's, and rightly so, he's, he's a warm person, and, you know, I have to give credit to a horse like Comet. He's, he's turned owners and he's turned strangers into family and counting Ashton as, and Renee as family. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I think a big plus for, for Comet you're doing was the name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My goodness. How did yeah. that, was, uh, you, 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 when I interviewed you this morning, of course, you, on our Gold Circle uh, Gala TV show for the previews of this weekend's racing, you'll get Michelle's comments on her runners for the weekend and she's got some lovely runners and they're hoping to be very competitive, but you'll certainly be able to watch that on, on the various platforms. But um, I think you were maybe with a bit of tongue in cheek because he did, uh, actually did a name Comedy Ding, didn't he? That's yes. That's correct. Uh, I got a phone call at about 10 o'clock one evening after nagging him for a while. I said, Ash, our horse is ready to run. We need to find a name. And yeah, it was probably a, a Tuesday evening at 10 o'clock. He's found a name, Comedy Ding. <laughs> I said, Ash, I'll phone you in the morning, hoping he would have forgotten. <laughs> he didn't forget. And, you know, both Renee and myself tried to dissuade him a little bit, saying, you know, We've never ever heard of a good horse with a name like this. He <laughs> stuck to his guns and let me tell you that horse, he soon grew into his name. Yeah, he certainly did. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, the, the meaning is, is it's, it's directly translated as come with a thing, is it? Yeah, but I mean... Bring it on, please. Bring yeah. it on, bring it on, come with a thing, That's bring it on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And now there's another runner that Ashwin's got. Just refresh my memory of the runner on the weekend. Hawkeye May Macy. Yeah, what? Hawkeye May yeah. Macy. Yeah, yeah. So that, that comes from a, a show on, on Cake Nets. Okay. And... Um, the woman who showed is Cherie. She came to the yard and you know she did a show on Comet and she got quite close with Ashwin and Ashwin said, my next filly I buy, I'm going to name her Hawkeye My Macy. And <laughs> that's how it's evolved. And Hawkeye My Macy debuts at Hollywood Bets Gravel. Uh, this, it hasn't had one run at debuts no, yet. Yeah, at Hollywood Bets Gravel this weekend, Hawkeye My Macy. And um, yeah, and then along with Ashwin and, and Renee and the whole team, of course, there's Gavin Lorena and Vicky, and, and they've also played a huge part uh, in Comet's life and in, in your life too. Oh gosh, you know, and that, you know, it's another, it's another group of people that we'd only just known through work. They've they've become family. Um, you know, Gavin and Vicky and the kids, Ashton and Ava, they're like my Joburg family, and yeah, yeah. It, it's it's thanks to a horse like this, That's, and yeah. um, he's he's created a lot of memories and and a lot of future memories to come. And again, Andrew, you know what irritates me is when, and, and it's, it's not a bickering show. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much. We'll go if you want us to. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So uh, is that, you know, people say, you know, the horses and uh, the, our horses, you know, we don't treat them as, as loved animals and our pets and etc. And, and that riles me a little because we do. And, and in particular, I remember when Comet retired, and we'll get to that in a moment, the beautiful carrot cake that was made and the banners and the signs and all the people that were there for the love of the horse, you know. So that's why I get a little agitated. Not, of course, not every horse gets a cake made every day, but we love our animals, we love our horses. And that was a hell of a day too. I mean, that cake looked delicious and the carrots and the, I mean, that was splashed all over the newspapers, the people's horse, that was a huge thing for racing. Yeah, that was his, his welcome home after, welcome home. Yeah, after he won the July. And that's yeah, right. that's when we realized that this horse actually had one massive following. It was incredible to see people from all over and he handled it like the, the champ that he is. Yeah, yeah well, it's a bit, you know, it, horses these days don't seem to, you have to get a really special one. So comedy doing it, I mean, he did very well, he got a good name. And Charles Dickens is another one now. Yeah, everybody's raving him. Yeah. The last horse that I can remember that had a, such a following was Sea Cottage, that going back 1960. Yeah. So it just shows yeah. the, 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 the magnitude of it, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Your other owners, um, how many in your, um, how, let me start that again, how many in the yard, and, and I know you can't list every owner, but mm. you blessed with some good solid owners. Yeah, you know, we currently have 30 horses in the yard with a few babies, and at the moment it's manageable, we've got a good team, and you know, at the moment we, we're a good run, we're managing Cape Town and Durban very well with the winners coming in, and it's, it's, it's thanks to our owners, you know, I couldn't do it without their support. We've got a, a big support from, from Brian van Hastien and Bianca, which always helps and a lot of new owners that have come in and you know to keep those guys in we've got a you know very passionate guy Jody van Yadden who's who's never owned a horse before okay. and you know he's, he's bought in Cape Town he's bought in Joburg and and to get new people in that are as passionate as, as what he is about his horses you know half your battles won as a trainer yeah, yeah. and then to get support from them you know, and just understanding a horse and not realizing that it's a robot or a machine, sure. it, it's incredible. Yeah, and, and, and uh, yeah, to get new people involved, it's lovely to hear those stories when, when new people get involved and, and because it is a game that we need to get new people involved. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, a t it's a tough game, it's become more and more difficult because in the old days, you now I'm going back 30, 40 years now, people used to know about horses. Um, was part of the part of the DNA. Mm. Now it's PlayStation and cars. Right? Yes, yeah. And they don't Absolutely. understand horses anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about Bron van Hastien, um, passionate man as well. He called me Boki uh, also, and, and that's what I wanted to say. You're talking about the yard in form. I was just looking with Raheel this morning. We were going through the with the winning form stats. And I, I don't know when it was cut off, which the, was the date, but the stat read your last 30 runners yielded eight winners and s in many places. I mean, that's a lovely stat to have. It, as you say, the yard's in purple patch at the moment. No, it's incredible. And I, and I think we, you know, we found a, a good team at the yard. Everyone knows what their job is and it, it makes me focus on, on training the horse. Yes. And we've got everyone that does their job and, you know, that it's clicked. It's a, it's a recipe that's working at the moment. So long may it continue. You're in KZN now, obviously for the season. I mean, what are the plans for those that are watching and that, may, that for those that are watching and that, I can't get my words out today. What's wrong with me? <laughs> You've been doping. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe I need a glass of red to set me straight, but it doesn't matter. Um, what are the plans for those that are watching for the first time, uh, hearing your story, and that might want to get involved, you know, whether it be in Cape Town or, I mean, are you going to raid in the future? I mean, are you, would you, I mean, are you, Cape Town's your base, will you always come to KZN? I mean, the point, what I'm saying is there's no, no satellite yard going to be in Joburg or Durban or, or what are the plans? You know, at, at the moment I'm, I'm firmly based in Cape Town. That's okay. my home. That's, you know, where my daughter is. And I think at this stage we probably just don't have the numbers to do it. Sure. And, and I've watched bigger yards and I've spoken to trainers and it's not an easy task to, to have a satellite yard. Yes. Ideally, it's something that I would love. I love, you know, I love the facilities here in KZN and as I said before, you know, Durban, and especially in the in the champion season, has been good to me. I've, you know, my first runner here was a Group Two winner. And That's right. Um, Just to refresh my memory. Oh, I remember that. That's so well. The uh, name of the horse. Uh, Perovsky. Perovsky. Yeah. Do you remember that Perovsky? I do. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's it. You know, we've come to Durban this year. 
with slightly different horses. It's a first for me. We've always come with bigger horses and aim for, for group races and we tried a little bit differently. We've got, you know, small horses that would like tighter tracks. So we've bought those kind of horses here, one or two maidens and then obviously some some juveniles that have that have stood out back yes, home. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but to speak to any of the big trainers of the satellite yards, it's coming like me. It is, yeah. it's not easy. And as Michelle is saying, you know, she's got 30, 30 31 horses and, and of course you scope to grow and, and, and want to grow, but that's where you base Cape Town, that's where you're racing from and, and if you get bigger you can always come, you know, for the season you'll always be here. So that's good to know, but you'd rather have that like sort of one yard boutique yard, you there permanently and, and that's it. So Yeah, but it's also good to spread your wings because you're outside of, of your home province. Um, yeah. So if you come here and you have success and people take notice. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's yeah. I mean, look at the stigma attached. You sort of can only train horses in Cape Town or they can only win in Joburg. Well, it's nice to be able to say, well, I've competed in all these provinces and this is what we've done. So. No, exactly. And I think it's a nice break for some of our horses as well, you know, to, to come here and have the, the warm weather on their backs. To I brought a lot of fillies purely because of the lighter tracks here. And, and I've seen a spring in their step yes. by coming here. And as I said before, Durban's been good to me. And just because I've made, you don't have those group horses, I certainly won't turn my back on KZN for no, the season. I, mean, I love it. You've already had winners, and you've already had yeah. winners, and, and more to come. I mean, the season's only just started. Your mom, uh, Mish, does she get involved much? Does she follow the racing? Does she? She is probably the backbone of, of the yard. Okay. Hugely okay. involved and quality control manager, <laughs> gambler, <laughs> you name it. She knows we every. We gamblers, yeah, we like gamblers. She knows every aspect of of a horse okay. of studying form and you know she's the quiet one at the back but she really is the the backbone of the yard okay, okay. and 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 your daughter you were telling us just off air that she's also horse mad and, and she, she does riding and does yeah she that's it you know she's we've just bought her horse from from the woodruffs and she's competing on show jumping and yeah listen it's a, it's an expensive <laughs> hobby probably more so than racing but it's what keeps her happy and you know as long as she's in the outdoors yeah. it's it's what counts absolutely keep them out of the mall that's it we were on here the, over the weekend and uh candice's two daughters were with us and they were put on to tutuzela um goth's horse of course oh and it was such an enjoyable experience that all the way home we were told oh. yes can yeah. we investigate oh, can we oh, now, can't you rather take a liking to the few that we have a little share in you know yeah. rather than start back because you're right yeah. it, it's Chatting to some of the show jumping people, it's 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 a great sport, but you need a serious yeah. amount of cash. It's far cheaper petting them, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw a float going up the hill of the Ashburton the other day, and on the back it was written, "Horses eat money." <laughs> True <laughs> they, story. Yeah. True story, but they do, and we love them, and we we're just lucky we can look after them and have them in our lives. Um, when you go to sales, uh, to, to horse sales, etc., which we're going to talk about, just advertise that these sales coming up, uh, what's your strategy there? I mean, do you have a particular horse that you look for? Or do you sort of try and go through as many as you can and whatever jumps out at you? How do you, do you select young horses? Well, you know, firstly we go through the catalogue and I, you know, I like to, to go through the pedigrees that I've trained before and, and stallions that I like. Um, I focus more on the dam side. And once I've narrowed it down in the catalogue, that's that's when the, the walking work comes in. Mm -hmm. Try and get through as, as many as you possibly can. You don't want to let anyone, you know, slip through your fingers. But also to look at the ones that, that would fit into your budget. Sure, sure. And, um, yeah, you know, try and find a well-balanced horse and one that stands out. And as they say, try and buy a Ferrari for the price of a Volkswagen. <laughs> and that, can, that certainly can be done. Last question is the big chap at Claverflay. How is he doing? What's the update? And, and I mean, have you been to Claverflay? No. Oh, well, you would like it because there's a bar there. No, I'll just forget the name. I'm getting, I'm getting, getting mad. But anyway, there's a beautiful bar, the Shamrock, I think it's called, on Claverflay, up on the hill. Obviously, you've been. And uh, don't let John get you in that bar because you don't come out. Well, if you do come out of that bar, <laughs> you crawl out. <laughs> but it is really a, it's a most magnificent farm, the most magnificent setting, everything of the best. And, and that they've got a beautiful statue of uh, Captain L. That, uh, it's, uh, you try, if you ever go to the Cape, try and get there. But you've got a nice dam. Oh, by the dozen. Well, dozen. You can fish, you can drink, you can look at horses, that. you can. You do not want to come home. But how's he doing and, and how did he end up there? And, and tell us that story. Yeah, you know, he's, he's settled in well. I spoke to, to John this week and he says, Michelle, he's, you know, he's gone 
dark in color. You know, he's enjoying paddock life. Obviously, he doesn't know what, what's coming in the, in the line months ahead, but I'm sure he'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was wonderful to, to hear John saying that he's, he's settled in well and he's happy. And I haven't gone to visit him yet. It's probably still a little bit raw when you work he's with a horse saying, yeah, every day for, for three and a half years, day in, day out. And, yeah. you know, follow him around the country, Durban, Cape Town, Joburg, fair, fair back comment. to Durban. Fair you know, yeah. um, I know when the time is right to, to go and see him. Yeah. And yeah, he's settling well. You know, he was born at Clava Flame. He's gone, okay. it's gone full circle, and yeah. and he's back home. Uh, does he have a good book? You know, I, I well, haven't uh, discussed that with, with with John, and but I'm sure he has. You know, a lot of a lot of the breeders, both Cape Town and, and Durban, have, have given him support. And you know, I hope. I hope they come up with nice yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest worry. <laughs> and, we, and we don't have years of, yeah. of strange names. But, um, well, before Andrew Fortune goes to Australia, yeah, 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 I was going to name a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's maybe a silly question, but he will start covering this, this end of the correct, year. Yes, yeah. start, okay, so we'll have a, so a nice time to let down. And, because and you know, when is the, I think it's you know, towards the end of the year they start covering September. September yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... But you, it's so true what you say, and again to the public out there that you know, just think we treat these horses as just machines, and, 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 and they come and go. Yeah, you're hearing from Michelle that you know, just a bit too soon to go and see him because she's still, she's still absolutely heartbroken to lose her, 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 her horse of, of, of her life. But you know, he's he's there and he's at Clover Flay. And I've heard a lot of people, owners and, and, and breeders already tell me that well, the mares are going there, so he'll definitely get supported there. Yeah, no you doubt. know, and he's, he's a horse that had, and probably still has one magnificent temperament on him. And you know, that's, that plays a huge role in, in, in his offspring. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does. There's some loony stallions out there. Sure, yeah, they are, I tell you, but uh, again, there's no rules. You can put a loony stallion to a quiet man, you get, you know, it's, there's no rules, but... Uh, well, you must read the story about uh, that, that horse, the Sir Tristram. Uh, that, that was, well, they used to cover the mares, they, they used to go in with, with these baseball things and helmets and things. Yeah. They used to eat you. They used to, yeah, they used to get, get, um, yeah, get, uh, get, get savage. Mitch, I'm going to just ask if you wouldn't mind giving me two minutes just to talk about a few promotional items and then we'll thank you and we'll close up. So I'm not being rude to ignore you, I just want to um, quickly tell the public of what's going on. And uh, let's start with the KZN yearling sale of 2023. Those catalogues are out. There is also catalogues online, 29th of June at Suncoast uh, in KwaZulu Natal. And here is uh, the catalog. So I'll ask uh, a few way just to zoom in so everybody can have a look at that. Those catalogues are out and uh, a wonderful sale just before the Hollywood Bets Durban July. And it really is a sale for all to get involved in. Keep the zoom in because there's another sale, Fortune Racing a June sale of 2023. That's on Wednesday, the 7th of June at half past 10 in the Winners' Enclosure at Vaal Racecourse, also hosted by Bloodstock South Africa. That catalogue's out and about as well. And uh, sad that we'll miss uh, Ashley and Andrew Fortune. We, we will miss them when they go to Australia, but they've been given a wonderful opportunity. I think uh, Andrew was saying that uh, they're going to run a spelling farm, I think, or of, of a hundred odd horses, or he's, he's got a lovely set up there. Yeah, yeah, by the time Andrew's finished, he'll have the whole of Australia fits with laughter. <laughs> he, that he certainly will have, he certainly will. And then, of course, there's racing at Hollywood Bets Gravel uh, on Saturday, the 27th of May. It's the big, big day, one of the big days. There's the Woolavington 2000, which is a Group 1 event. Rain and Holland runs. Daily News 2000, Grade 1 as well. See it again, Cousin Casey. Um, without question, Anfield's Rocket, just a few names, and then the Lonsdale Stirrup Cup, which is a Group 3 over 2,400 metres, and that's a, a, a competitive field as well. Are you coming to the races on the weekend? I will be there. Okay, Michelle will be there because they've got three runners. Let's tell you who their three runners are. Their three runners are, as you heard earlier, Hokai Mai Macy, Strawberry Stinger, and Here Komi Boki. So keep an eye out for the Rick's Yard on the weekend. There's no doubt that you're a Cape trainer. <laughs> yeah. with, no. with Cape owners. <laughs> with Cape owners with Cape names, absolutely. But, uh, and then just before we wrap, um, the soccer, uh, just keep an eye on that on our social media platforms. Continually we're hearing of punters that are investing small money, two rand, five rand, eight rand into the soccer six, soccer ten, score six, score ten, and winning huge amounts of money. So if you can get it right, uh, take a chance and, and take your soccer teams and, and well done to all those that have won. But follow us on Facebook, Instagram, 
and uh, as much as you can, and that'll all be advertised. There's also wonderful pick six carryovers, lots of meeting opportunities. Andrew, yes. I'm going to just bid you farewell first, and then the lady last. Good. We'll do it the opposite way. We welcomed her first, and, but I want to have the parting shot with, with Michelle. Nice to see you. I see you all dolled up. You've got a bit of a meeting today. Not a meeting, meeting today, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I, I usually race unshod. Yeah. Normally, <laughs> it comes with no shoes. I have noticed, yes. yes. Yeah, no shoes and shorts. There must so. be a special occasion. Yeah, well, <laughs> the team said, well, because Michelle's a, a lady of the turf, <laughs> you're going to have to dress up. But you said that too, but you, you're going to uh, a meeting. You've got yeah, a meeting, a meeting later. Later. Okay, all right. And, uh, well, thanks. Nice to see you. And nice that you're back from Seychelles. Uh, I'm away next week. I haven't even passed my leave. In fact, two of the gentlemen that I, I, I report to, one is enjoying a hearty breakfast here at the Summerfield Clubhouse. He's just heard me say I'm away next week. He just spat out his eggs and bacon. He said, that's not going to happen. I haven't submitted my leave yet. And you, you, don't, you, have, you don't know about my leave yet. No. Well, I, I don't I'm know. Posted, yeah. Well, okay, I'll send an email this afternoon. I'm going to a wedding in Johannesburg, Gosh. and I'm going to take two or three days off at the same time and enjoy some time up. But... We'll sort that out later, but uh, so I don't know who you're going to be with. You might have to fly solo next week. Yeah, we'll have to find someone who talks a lot. Some find someone who talks a lot. And then our final wishes go out to Michelle. Thank you for your time. Thank and, you so uh, much. Lovely to chat to you and hear the story. And, and a very uh, quiet lady that goes about, does her business, always happy to talk to the media and uh, who continually lets the results speak for themselves. And if you want to get involved and have a horse in the Cape and have a horse anywhere, really, uh, get hold of the Ricks Racing Stables. And uh, it's, it's, I'm sure you will the results. Go and look up the results and, and you'll see what they were. But thank you for, for all that you guys did as well for Comedy Ding because I'm sure your, you know, your, 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 your life as well, you know, it's just all comics, you know. It's, it's pressure and it's, it's home life. It's all those things. And he's just done you so proud. And, and thanks for all the hours that you've loved him and, and will continue to love him and for all the horses that you, you look after so well. And uh, we thank you for that. Thank you so much. Uh, lovely. Well, that's Michelle Ricks, Andrew Harrison, Warren Inferno, up Piwe, and uh, Tawanda Talavinga, the birthday boy who, uh, I don't know, buy a cake. couldn't buy a cake. I'm a, see, I think I've got a spare hundred in the car. He can buy us a cake, but really a, a poor show. But yeah, I believe he makes very good rabbit curry. Uh, maybe he wants to give us some of that. But that's a wrap from all of us. Be safe, be kind, God bless, and uh, we'll see you as always. Plenty of racing action in the province. We'll see you as always in the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.